for asking that. Good evening, friends, and welcome to yet another awesome session of Mindful Living. We really appreciate your taking out the time and joining us at 8.28 p.m. on a weekday. I promise you that Dr. Nupur and I will do our best to make this investment of time really worth your while. What we are going to be talking about today is something that is very, very powerful. Please allow me a minute. There are people who are coming and I'll just keep letting them in. Uh, is emotions. You know, people say uh, human beings are uh, social animal. I say human beings are emotional animal. We are driven by emotions. And uh, the emotions are energy in motion. Only thing is we are not uh, aware many a times because many of these uh, rest in our subconscious mind or even if we are aware, we get baffled because this is not something which we have grown up uh, learning how to manage. And this happens uh, to the best of the people, like I was uh, discussing with Professor Ratan, you know, when uh, Arjun was there in the battlefield, you know, what he is sharing with Krishna is, Mere gaya hai, mere kaap rahe aur main utha pa So he, Arjun was the best of the warriors, but even best of the warriors, when they're in the battlefield, uh, you know, they find it very, very difficult to deal with their emotions. And that's why uh, understanding emotions, understanding trauma, uh, becoming aware about that is very, very important. And it happens uh, not to few, uh, but to 70% of the adults experience uh, trauma in their life. Uh, and this is a study which covered 68,000 people in 29 countries. And they found that 70% of the adults experience trauma. And there are multiple reasons. Some of the common ones are uh, having a breakup, a change in life, a death of a loved one. I lost my father at a very early age. Uh, and that was very traumatic for it for me. And I didn't know how to deal with it. So I suffered a lot. I didn't realize it that I'm suffering uh, for many, many years, uh, you know, till I developed some awareness uh, about this and started to manage my emotions better. Uh, infidelity in relationships, loss of a job, the first time I lost a job was uh, about 21 years ago when September 11 happened, you know, and the company I was working with closed the office which I was heading. So I lost a job, not <laughs> performance issue, but external uh, environmental or ter terrorism issue. So things happen, you know, and there are many other, these are just two examples. I'm sure uh, people have many instances where they have faced trauma, violence, discrimination, racism, many, many, many other things. This by no means is the most comprehensive list. Uh, the research covered 29 different types of traumas. These are some of the most uh, common ones. And uh, what happens is when we experience trauma, uh, this is a negative energy and uh, it keeps us trapped in a low energy state. We feel uh, frustrated. We feel, uh, you know, we feel resentment. We do, uh, we uh, undertake actions which, uh, wherein we sabotage ourselves, depression, sadness, anxiety, a lot of challenges which people face uh, because of this. And it affects the way we think about ourselves. Uh, it uh, affects the way we react to stress, uh, our physical well-being, the way we develop relationships with people. It impacts uh, almost every aspect of our life, physical, mental, social aspect of our life, even spiritual. Uh, and that is the reason we, uh, we uh, invited Dr. Nupur Agrawal to talk to us about this uh, simple but profound practice of EFT or tapping as it is also known as, uh, which can help us deal with difficult emotions. This technique is deceptively simple, but profoundly impactful. Uh, and Dr. Nupur, uh, who's a medical doctor living in London, uh, UK, uh, is eminently qualified to uh, deliver this talk. She has done a lot of research in the area of mind-body medicine. Uh, she's a certified meditation teacher, uh, clinical hypnotherapist, and has been working with NHS Hospital for over uh, five years. Uh, she offers one-to-one -one coachings, group workshops, and is a Reiki master. Uh, Dr. Napur, you're there. Yeah, hi Ashish. Um, thank you for that uh, generous introduction and um, lovely to see so many people taking out their precious time. 
I'm very excited to be here to share uh, whatever I know and my experiences with this wonderful modality. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nupur. Uh, how many of you friends are joining us for the first time? If you're joining a mindful living session for the first time, please type FT in the chat box. If you are joining a session of mindful living for the first time, please type thank you, Shobita. Welcome to the session. Thank you, Urvashi. Welcome to the session. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Uh, thank you for sharing that feedback. I'll take a minute to introduce myself. My name is Ashish Kumar and I'm the founder of Mindful Living. I started Mindful Living in 2018. Uh, prior to uh, starting Mindful Living, I worked in the corporate sector for over 25 years in senior management roles with organizations like Tata Group, uh, Future, HCL, and Daba Group. During the years of my working in the corporate sector, I saw how closely, I closely saw how my colleagues uh, and the people you know, I was working with uh, are witnessing high levels of stress and the impact that stress is taking on their health, happiness, and finan uh, financial well-being. And I thought to myself that being a certified mindfulness meditation teacher, that there is something that should be done about this. We can't let... Um, things continue as they are. We need to share the message of living happily, healthily uh, uh, with the employees in the corporate sector. And with that mission of impacting lives of 1 million working professionals, we started Mindful Living. Uh, over the last four years, we have conducted over 300 sessions for uh, over 10,000 employees and leading organizations like Aditya Birla Group, uh, Tata Group, IBM, EXL, Signify, Schneider, and many other organizations. This session today is being organized as a part of our community initiative. This is a community which started uh, when uh, uh, in April 2020, when the first lockdown took place. And people, a uh, few of my friends reached out to me saying that Ashish, uh, please help us deal with this anxiety, this stress uh, that the lockdown is, uh, you know, uh, causing us. And over a weekend, we, 10 of my friends, we got together and practiced mindfulness. One thing led to the other. And today we have now a vibrant community of 3000 people who practice uh, application of mindfulness uh, through different sessions and themes that we cover every week. Today's session is one such a session as a part uh, in that series. And in case you would like to be a part of the Mindful Living community, please feel free to join the link which I will be sharing uh, in a while from now in the chat. Uh, this is a community where we don't encourage any discussion on politics or religion. Uh, we all come together in a spirit of learning and sharing. So that is what this community is about. In case you're interested, please join us. The sessions in the month of August are all dedicated to freedom, and this session is in that theme. Uh, the sessions in uh, September will be dedicated to the theme of World Heart Day, and there are exciting sessions that we are going to be uh, lining up for you uh, in the month of September. On that, just one uh, housekeeping uh, rule: uh, please keep your cameras on. That helps the uh, uh, you know that helps better engagement. And while we are taking the question answers at the end, please stay actively engaged during the session. Uh, uh, show love to Dr. Nupur if there is something that resonates. Uh, what she says resonates with you. Show uh, thumbs up, clap, or whatever else you would like to do. Uh, so use this reactions button and the emojis very effectively and stay engaged actively. Wishing you the very best for this awesome session. Please stay tuned in completely and learn the powerful technique that Dr. Nupur is going to be not only talking about, but also demonstrating to us. So this will be an experiential session. Stay tuned. Over to you, Dr. Nupur. Thank you so much, Ashish. And uh, I mean, it's incredible the work that Mindful Living is doing for the community and for everybody. And the sessions that are being conducted, not just on Saturdays, but also on uh, weekdays now. So, uh, and I want to thank each one of you for taking out your time because I know um, how precious time is these days. So thank you so much for that. 
Uh, emotional freedom technique uh, is a very uh, new technique, which has been around, I would say, for the last uh, three, four decades. So relatively a new modality that came up. Uh, I will be talking about how accidentally it was discovered. But to be uh, honest with you, there are no accidents. It's, all, it's as they say, when energetically uh, the universe and the universe and people are ready, we receive such uh, downloads, you know, uh, for our healing in human in humankind. When we need that kind of knowledge, that's the time when we receive that knowledge. And clearly, it was time when we needed something to resolve, as Ashish was telling us about our highly stressed states. And um, you know the 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 pandemic of uh, I would say cancer and other threatening conditions like uh, you know even the corona pandemic that happened. So these techniques have been around uh, for many of us. It might be the first time that we are listening about EFT. One thing that I would really uh, request you all is to be present with a lot of openness, because sometimes what happens is our minds. Uh, play devil's advocate and though that's a good thing but sometimes it's not for our best so be with a beginner's mind or what we call shoshin i'm a mindfulness teacher so you know in mindfulness we talk about a concept called shoshin or beginner's mind where we encourage everybody to come with a childlike attitude childlike curiosity so just for a few um minutes or probably half an hour suspend your um uh, you know sense of doubt and be open to listening. And once you have listened, I'd be very happy to take up all your critical questions, all your doubts, and, and I'll be backing up everything that I'm saying with a lot of research, because this modality luckily has been widely researched. So we have a lot of evidence, uh, because a lot of times people think that anything to do with healing or energy medicine is very woo woo or airy fairy. But I can, you can be rest assured that this modality um, uh, like now we know mindfulness or hypnosis or, you know, even um, uh, other modalities have so much research going into them. So that's my um, only request that come with that beginner's mind um, being open and um, a childlike in your curiosity to learn. And then uh, we can don our critical hats on. So with that, I'm going to start sharing my screen. And while I do that, actually, I would like to ask a question uh, to everybody present here. What do we really mean by the emotional freedom that we are talking about here? So it's an emotional freedom technique, as the name suggests, right? So any, any thoughts on what does emotional freedom really mean? Anybody wants to comment on, on the chat or just unmute yourself maybe one at a time? And I please. Yes, please. Go ahead, Mr. Dayal. It says the picture says a thousand words. They're just posting the picture. You can clearly feel that the bird, the mind inside, which is just struggling or emotional conflict, wants to get free out of it. I think your picture is uh, completely saying the answer for what you've been asking. Thank you for sharing that. Thank That's you. That's one thing. But again, the, these emotions are so deeply rooted and so childhood. And there are lots of things, like, you know, there are lots of layers. So eventually you're look, looking for, uh, say, Hamlok Bhutan, like uh, wisdom, yeah, it moksha, yeah, it liberation. Not talking about the worldly thing, but beyond that, which again, uh, like we have been doing programs on those yoga sutras and all the fantastic. So again, the combination of that. All right, thank you, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Uh, and for those of us who perhaps don't know what emotional freedom means, I would really encourage you to perhaps think of this uh, and contemplate that. What does this really mean? Because the entire technique. Uh, is based on the fact that we are trapped in our emotions, right? And the emotional freedom that we are talking about here means our freedom to feel fully and to really express fully. Now, when we talk about feeling fully, it might, it might sound something obvious, but that's not something we do. We tend to suppress and repress our emotions, or we don't know how to channelize our emotional energy in the right way. So you may feel that, oh, I, I, you may label yourself as an angry person or a person with outbursts, or you may call yourself as a person who doesn't express their emotions well. So emotional freedom means the ability to fully feel whatever you are experiencing and then understand ways in which you can channel those emotions without creating conflict, right? And that's the power once we are 
able to, and it's not something that's taught to us in schools, unfortunately. It's, it's not something that we are taught in our societies. We are literally expected to know this. That's why when people have um, a, a loss, uh, it could be a financial loss, it could be a loss of a loved one, we don't really understand how to handle our grief. We don't know how to handle rejection. You know, so we, we sway like a pendulum from one side to another with intense emotions and not knowing how to even express them and, and kind of numbing ourselves. So when people uh, get uh, addicted to substances, you know, addiction to uh, smoking or alcohol or drugs or even gaming addictions, we are in a way trying to numb ourselves because we don't uh, allow ourselves to feel fully and to know how to channel those emotions. So with this technique, uh, we are going to learn some of that. So even though emotional freedom technique as such uh, talks about uh, the way of releasing these trapped emotions, um, I want you to also know that I will be talking uh, along with the process today about a workshop that's happening next week where you'll be understanding this technique in details. Today, I'm going to give you a lot of information Today, I'm going to also teach you and demonstrate a few steps of the EFT technique, but that's just literally a taster. So it's enough for you to understand the technique and you can, there's so many online forums where you can learn it if you wish to, but we are also conducting the workshop. So this is something that I will be talking in depth about this emotional freedom, but understand it's our ability to feel fully and to, and to express through channeling our emotions in the right way. And uh, now we know, and I am, I have been working in the space of mind-body medicine, right? And what does mind-body medicine tell us? It tells us that all the diseases that we are experiencing, all the physical dis-ease, the chronic health challenges that we are experiencing, a huge burden is because of our emotional suppression. Suppressed, repressed, unprocessed emotions contribute to our ill health. They contribute and, and are a huge factor for in fact initiating our disease processes, right? So all the more reason for us to understand how emotions are, are connected with our mental health and our physical health. And that's going to be my, my intention today uh, through this talk and through this process of EFT. A little bit about the history of uh, emotional freedom technique. Uh, this was um, discovered, as I talked about, quite uh, interestingly by Dr. Callahan, Dr. Roger Callahan, in early 1980s. Uh, Dr. Callahan was a psychologist and he was uh, um, also um, a practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine, TCM. And if you know, EFT is also many times referred to as acupressure without needles, right? So uh, it has its roots in that. Now, Dr. Callahan was a psychologist and um, as I said, knew uh, uh, also a lot about traditional Chinese medicine. He was dealing with one of his clients uh, or patients uh, by the name of Mary. And Mary had a crippling fear of water. So she was one person who was going through such intense panic and anxiety attacks uh, and to the, to the extent that she couldn't even get into her own bathtub at home. Uh, Dr. Callahan was trying various modalities with her for almost a year and a half. Um, till one point, uh, one day after one and a half years in his consultation room, what he thought of working was because she was sharing with him that his, her anxiety and her panic attacks, though manifest in many ways, but she also feels very intense discomfort in her stomach. There was a lot of churning. There was a lot of pain and, and, and kind of almost knotting up in her abdominal or stomach region. And when she said that to Dr. Callahan, something, some, something of an epiphany happened there. And he said, uh, so let's try something new, which we have never done before. Let's tap on our stomach meridian point. And I'll explain to you what that means. Uh, he got her to tap below her eyes. So there is a bony point below our eyes. That's where he started to make her tap because this is the point where the stomach meridian, it's an end point of the stomach meridian as per traditional Chinese medicine. And they started tapping and Dr. Callahan started guiding her into certain uh, statements while she was tapping there. And as they were doing that, just after a very brief and short session, this lady felt as if something had lifted and she felt a huge sense of relief. Obviously her uh, sensations in the stomach had drastically eased down. 
And, and uh, the consultation where Dr. Callahan's room was, was in a building uh, at, at the entrance of which was a swimming pool. And this lady finished this brief treatment and she decided to go towards the swimming pool at the entrance of the building. And Dr. Callahan was uh, perturbed by the side because he was like, he didn't know what's happening because she was scared of water. And this lady actually went up to the swimming pool. And I think, I'm not sure whether she had a dip, but she certainly put her feet in the water and she felt very, very okay with that. And this is the lady who would actually struggle to enter the building because the sight of water in the swimming pool used to create panic attacks and anxiety or anywhere else in the world that you would see water, water bodies. Uh, from then, from that day onwards, her fear of water, the water phobia had completely lifted. And Dr. Callahan understood that this happened because of the release of trapped emotions and trauma from her energy body, from her energy meridians. And as this was happening, he started working on more energy meridian points. And he started something which is called the thought field therapy or TFT. Uh, EFT was uh, kind of given to us by a student of his who was learning all, all of this. His name was uh, Gary Craig. He was learning all this from Dr. Callahan. And um, he, was, uh, he also was a student of kinesiology and Chinese medicine. He put various things together and he introduced these uh, energy meridian points, which we tap on. And he, he kind of introduced the, the world to emotional freedom technique, right? And from that day onwards, it's been used extensively for various health challenges, for severe anxiety, stress, phobias, and panic attacks, and so much more that I'll be talking to you about. Now, this history is really important for us to understand because it's a beautiful coming together of the West and the Eastern uh, uh, modalities that are there, right? I was, in fact, uh, conducting a chakra workshop last month, and we were discussing that the way in Indian system we have chakras, and now it's being understood more by the Western world as well. In the, in, in the Chinese um, uh, medical system, ancient, it was the traditional uh, meridians, the energy meridians that go through the body, right? So uh, in EFT or emotional freedom technique, what we do is uh, tap on these points. So it's interesting uh, that there are only, a, uh, this is just a few points, there are more than this, but this is the basic template. So these are the points at the top of our head, as you can see, eyebrow points, side of the eyes, and collarbone and underarm and something what you call the karate chop. So when I will be giving the demonstration today, I'll be doing something uh, along these points. So I will be telling you more about these points. And look at this diagram. It's a very interesting diagram that is telling us all of, the, all of these are on the right side energy meridians, right? So we, what, the, the meridian that uh, Dr. Callahan made Mary tap on was the uh, stomach meridian. It was the end point of the stomach meridian, right? And if you can just locate, this is the point, right? Uh, and like that, these, these meridians are the energy channels um, that are flowing through, through our body. So they say that the, uh, the, the chi or the life force energy or the pran shakti that we call uh, is flowing through the body through uh, these energy channels, right? And the more we ta uh, tap on these uh, energy endpoints, the more we are releasing the stuck energy. So according to traditional Chinese medicine, as well as EFT uh, research, what we have come to understand is that diseases or health challenges or mental health issues are happening because of the dysregulation uh, of, of energetic flow in the body. So when we have something of a trapped or a blocked emotion, it creates a blockage in the flow of the energy through the body. It's almost like imagine uh, a roadblock on the, on the main road leading up to your house, right? So when there is a block in one of the main, main uh, uh, arteries in the body or the roadblocks in, in your locality, you can imagine the chaos it causes, right? So similarly, when there is a block in the energy field, which is because of our emotional and mental suppression, that's what causes disease according to them, and successfully so, because that's exactly what acupressure, acupuncture is doing, and now in EFT we are seeing. So this is the diagram which I wanted you all to understand that these are exactly the endpoints of energy meridians. Uh, in, in this um, uh, example that uh, the history of EFT was about under the eye point. So just a little more detail of this point, 
Uh, and like this, when we are doing the workshop, we will be going into the details of all the points. And we'll be understanding that each point has got certain uh, associated emotions. And when we tap on them, they help us to release not only those emotions, but also the physical manifestations of those emotions. Like in Mary's case, it was discomfort in the stomach and heart palpitations and many more. So one of the key things that resolved for her was actually stomach related and the phobia lifted for her. So each uh, endpoint has got a lot of stuff that it has uh, associations with, right? And we tap, when we tap here, we are releasing, plus we are also allowing like acceptance, commitment, a feeling of confidence. And as I'll be telling you a bit more about um, the research, I will get into what's happening really at the level of physiology, anatomy, and neuro neurology in the body. Because we understand now that um, EFT is creating certain shifts in our neural pathways, in, in, in our brain perceptions. And that's what I'll be coming to when I talk about the research. Um, EFT has a, is, is a very powerful modality. Um, I would just request everybody to mute themselves, please, so that it's, um, there's no background sound. Thank you so much. Uh, with uh, EFT, uh, I personally have been using it for a few years now in my practice. Uh, of course, I'm using it a lot in the mind-body space. I'm using it a lot for health challenges, pain management, but I've also been using it for children. And this is a very powerful modality where children are very, very receptive. Children who are not able to express their emotions, but they feel it, in fact, perhaps more intensely than we do. And our children absorb a lot of things from the environment, from their, their home environment, from their school environment, from the society. So they uh, are, are also going through a lot. So it's not that stress and anxiety belongs to only adult uh, adults in, in our world. It's also something very rampant for the children and uh, bullying and gaming addictions and a lot of health challenges which children go through. In fact, I've been working with a lot of teenagers who do self-harm, right? Uh, so self-harm is when they try to cut themselves and, and, and when various other challenges uh, uh, with uh, anorexia nervosa or bulimia where they throw up because they have a body dysmorphic disorders. So even when those things, uh, EFT is very powerful. Bedwetting, fear, and inability to sleep for children. This modality is something which is like a play for a young child, for a child as young as six year old. You know, they, they find it a very playful modality because when we are tapping, they almost enjoy doing it. It's not a punishment, right? For them, they, they are participating in almost like a game. So it's something that is really powerful for children. So, um, as I said uh, in the workshop that I'll be doing, though it's targeted for adults. But if you learn that, you, you will also learn the ways in which you can in, include your children and help them as well, right? So uh, a lot of conditions I've mentioned here, but this is obviously a very, very restricted list. There is so many applications, uh, but these are some of the key areas of my work. And that's why I thought I must include these many. But if you look up emotional freedom technique online, you'll see many other issues for which people have found amazing resolution in their problems. Now coming to understanding how does this technique work? I mean, it's, it's quite amazing and it's almost unbelievable to understand that a person who was in therapy for years and with Dr. Callahan itself for one and a half years, she wasn't able to find any resolution for something as intense as her phobia and her panic attacks got resolved to a huge extent in the first session and by the second session, she was completely free of phobia. How did that happen? Right now, now is the time in the world where we have some amazing research that's going on. And we are very blessed to be born in this time because everything that we claim has got either a research validation with it. So now we can take it uh, with confidence to the world and say that this works. So please try it. This is a study, one of its kind, very new and fresh that came up uh, where they actually mapped the areas in the brain of participants before and after a four week treatment of emotional freedom technique. So they actually uh, tapped for four weeks, uh, X amount of time. Uh, and this was for people who were obese, overweight, overweight adults, obese and overweight adults. And this was when um, uh, to, uh, to notice that when they were shown certain images, very flashy images of food items that would 
initial that kind of would trigger their food cravings how were they responding because for a person who has an issue with overweight sometimes not always could be a, a, a overeater or could have a problem with food addiction sugar addiction right uh, of course overweight is because of many other reasons but in this particular group was with people who were finding the trigger to be a food craving and would overindulge now if you can see this image on the left these are the areas in yellow and orange are the areas of the brain that got lit up when these people were shown images that means these are the centers that got triggered and that would in make them indulge in that food item right now having done the eft technique when the fmri and fmri scans are functional magnetic resonance imaging these are images which are taken in action so while they were feeling and doing that they were imaging was being done to them now the the this is the scan post fmr post uh, treatment with eft and you can see that none of the brain areas which were previously lit up for these individuals get lit up and this is huge that means eft is actually creating certain neural shifts right it is creating certain changes at in the in the brain network and that means obviously they didn't have the trigger of food craving right and the right hand side graph is of people who were in the control group so a control group whenever we are doing some pilot research studies there is always a control group which is given something different from the modality that is being tested now in the control group both sides pre and post get lit up so that means for them there was no resolution but for this group that was huge right so this is again a study that is telling us that this eft is creating shifts at the level of our mind it is creating neuroplastic changes i will also be talking a little bit more about this uh, after i share all the research of what's really going on in our uh, sympathetic nervous system or a fight or flight reflex another study that was done which i talked about was uh, ashish in fact mentioned it today was trauma now he talked about a very personal uh, experience of having lost his father lost his job and that's a huge traumatic event that we all go through in different phase forms and and times of our life right now that's something what we call trauma trauma was identified as a huge problem and given a diagnosis of post traumatic stress disorder or ptsd especially after noticing the uh, individuals who were at the battlefield these were they, they were called war veterans once they were returning back from their um, uh, postings back into normal life they started exhibiting huge anxiety panic attacks and huge flashbacks of their time at the battlefield because they were obviously so triggered right to the point that they were finding daily life difficult to navigate they were not able to function so this was a veteran stress project that was done where almost 10000 veterans and their family members were subject were made to practice emotional freedom technique or tapping and here the results were amazing as it shows that almost 60% reduction uh, per 60% of the people experience reduction in their ptsd symptoms of nightmares flashbacks anxiety depression you know stress and 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 reduction in this is huge because otherwise they were just on medication right and that was having its own side effects so this technique which has no side effects was able to down regulate so much of their ptsd symptoms right stress hormone called cortisol came down and this is again a study that shows that in eft trap tapping group 43% reduction in cortisol what is cortisol cortisol is a stress hormone right so when we are uh, in a stressful situation um it could be either something that is a, is a, is a chronic stress or it could be something like an acute stress like when somebody is in a road traffic accident that's a that's a acute stress that just happened right now right and that's what uh, the body releases certain chemicals to help us to deal with that stressful situation now chronic stress is what we find is clinically very damaging chronic stress is almost like having your foot on the accelerator in your car all the time you are going at 200 180 miles per hour constantly right that's what chronic stress does now our body is beautifully designed to handle stress 
But when this stress becomes chronic, that's when uh, our body starts to break down. That's where the inflammation starts to go up. We get cardiovascular events like strokes, hypertension, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular events like heart attack happen, right? And so many other conditions, health challenges start to happen. This is because there is a part of our um, brain system uh, which, which we call uh, as a sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight, flight, or fright response. And that gets triggered. And that's what the cortisol hormone does to our body, right? They release the cortisol hormone versus, uh, and also the uh, a huge part of our brain, which is called amygdala, is responsible for this response, stress response, increasing in cortisol. It leads to all of that. Uh, in EFT now, the studies are telling us that uh, the EFT te uh, technique is actually helping us to manage. It is changing the way the amygdala is processing st chronic stress in the body, right? So that's the impact it's having. It's having a direct impact on many areas of the brain. And it is changing our neural patterns and neural pathways. And not just that, it is also creating, and this is huge, right? DNA. Now, DNA is our genetic material, or DNA is what is we call in common parlance as genes. Deoxyribonucleic acid. So a lot of, you may have heard, oh, this runs in my family. What does that mean? We have a familial predisposition that is a genetic effect of these uh, of certain conditions. EFT now, uh, there was a pilot study done, and I have quoted all the references. If anybody wants to go through this, uh, there is a reference, or you can even ask me later on for the studies. These are all you can find online, otherwise I can share with you. This study is telling us that EFT tapping had an impact on our gene expression, right? In 72 genes that they found change. That means this is influencing you not just at the cellular level, but at the genetic level, at the gene level. And this is helping you down-regulate inflammation and up-regulate immunity genes. And I'm not going to go into the details of a lot of other things that it is helping you, but I just want you to know that this is huge, right? And this is just in the last few years of research that has come up with this modality. And now we understand that EFT tapping is not just is something which is, uh, because a lot of people say, because you're tapping, maybe it is a distraction technique. You are getting distracted from your pain. You're getting distracted from your anxiety. Well, if, you, if it were only a distraction technique, it wouldn't have created so many changes at the neurological and at the genetical level, right? So, and, and now we know that amygdala and other areas, cortisol, which is a, a, a biochemical, it's a, it's a hormone that is a neurotransmitter is, 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 is coming down, right? Cortisol, the stress hormone is coming down. So all of this is telling us that this is creating a huge impact on our lives, right? Now, I want us to actually understand how is this process done. So I'm gonna just take you back uh, into a quick demo. And I want us to um, pick up a challenge that we are going through. And I'm gonna tell you about the technique of EFT. In EFT, what we do is we start by picking up, and I'm gonna encourage all of us to do this today, to pick up a, a particular challenge and let, let that be not something very, very, very intense challenge. If you're having a pain in the body right now, let's pick that up. Or if you're going through a certain emotional challenge, let's pick that, pick that up. Something that can be worked on, something that's a little bite-sized. In EFT, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you, suppose you're not able to join us for the workshop, you'll still take away a technique and that you can research on your own. We start by numbering the intensity of our challenge. So if it's pain, for example, uh, you, you have to be very specific. Suppose it's pain in your knees. Then I'll ask you, pick up and be specific, whether it's pain in your left knee or it's pain in the right knee, right? So be very specific with your statement. And I would want you to now number it on a scale of zero to 10. Zero being no pain at all and 10 being a very, very excruciating or extreme pain. That, that's, that'll be level 10. Now, this is the basis of assessing yourself subjectively or on your own. It's called SUDS level, subjective units of distress, right? Now, once you have given your problem a score, this is before starting the, the tapping. Suppose it's at eight, suppose it's at seven. It could be at nine or it could be at 10 and 10, right? Give your problem a score now. 
and then I'm going to guide you through a protocol and we're going to tap through the things. In fact, it could be even better if, the, if you could have a, a volunteer. So would anybody in the group like to volunteer? And I will be doing it with that person, but all of you can pick up your challenge and tap alongside with us. So any show of hands, anybody wants to, um, I can see uh, nobody Danny, right now. So Danny to... has raised her hand, Dr. Nakur. Okay. Dr. Okay, Dr. Kal Kalyani, would you like to share with us what's your challenge, please? Okay, let's go to Pratibha. Hello, 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 okay, hello, hello. Hi. Hello, uh, Kalyani. Hello. I have a lot of bloating and gas and stomach ache, typically at night, you know. And, okay, uh, so um, we will take a challenge that is bothering you right now. So, you know, just for the sake of uh, practice, so that everybody can understand it. So, pick up okay, one so issue that's bothering you right now. Yeah, left knee uh, pain. Pain. Okay, where is the pain? In the knee. In the knee, okay. Uh, as I said, how specific can you be? Is it in both the knees or is it just in one knee? Yeah, many a times it's in both the knees, but left knee is too much. So let's pick up left knee for now, right? Let's be right. very specific, okay? For yeah. right now, it's the pain in the left knee and I want you to give it an intensity score, SUDS level, on a scale of zero to 10. Uh, instinctively tell me what number flashes up when you think of that pain. How strong is it? Eight, eight. Okay. Eight on 10. Now I'm going to be guiding you. Just do this with me right now. Just follow the process with me. Uh, and for all of our participants who are on the call uh, and you're, you would like for, uh, for, for yourself to do, for you, maybe it's not pain. For you, maybe it could be a sense of, uh, you know, like I, I work with people with frozen shoulders. So a, a lack of mobility. This works amazingly well for people with frozen shoulders. Or it could be feeling. Uh, of um, you could be feeling really sad right now because something has happened or you could be feeling anger right now. So whatever is, whether it's your emotional or your physical condition, pick that up. You can say the same things that I'm saying with uh, Ms. Kalyani, but, yeah. and this is called borrowing benefits. Uh, yeah, so this is called borrowing benefits. It's a huge thing, which we'll be also discussing in the workshop. I want you to follow along, keep yourselves muted but tap the way I'm tapping with Kalyaniji. And, and I would request you to also mute yourself. So um, you can say it in your own space, the sentences that I'm saying, but please keep yourselves unmuted. Sorry, right? can you be spotlighted to see you better? Okay, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stop sharing the screen. Just before I stop sharing the screen and before they spotlight me again, I want you to know the points so that you know you can be spontaneous with it. The, one of the points is tapping on the head. This is the top of the head. If you can see here, it's slightly not the front, but this mound, the crown, it's here, tapping on the head. We tap on the eyebrow point. This is the point where the eyebrows begin, right? So this is the point here. Then we have a point on, so if you're wearing glasses, please take them off. If you have any eye problems, then please don't do this. And these are all bony points. So never ever tap on the soft tissue of the eye. It's always the bony points. Side of the eye is the point, right? The bony point next to the eye. Under the eye is a point right below on the bone, which is called the, this is a socket. This is the eye socket. This is a bony socket. So right below your pupil of the eye is that point, bony point. Under the nose is quite simple. Under the chin is this dimple in the chin. Below the lower lip and above the chin, there is a slight crest here. That's where your chin point is. Collarbone point is here, right? Very simple. Again, an inch below your collarbone, you can tap here. Under the arm point is four inches below your armpit. So it's literally four. It's also called the monkey point because when we are tapping like this, we all look like monkeys, right? So you can either tap both sides, but I would be just showing on one side for the, it's, it's, it's easier. So both are okay. When I'm giving the demonstrations, you can choose to tap on one side of the body or you can tap like me on both sides of the body. It's absolutely okay. Uh, this is a karate chop point where we'll be beginning, right? Certain places we'll tap, we'll always tap at the tip of our fingers. And this is four fingers where we tap like this. And on certain parts on the face, we will be tapping with two fingers as four fingers are difficult to fit there. So we'll be tapping like this with two fingers, right? So now I'm going to stop the share as hopefully you've all understood the points, right? So we are going to go into tappings. We are going to do two to three quick rounds. 
and this is just for the demo, please tap along and say the sentences out, out aloud. Okay, don't mumble them, don't think of them. I want you to be as loud as I am, right? So you can hear your own voice. Yeah, perfect. All right, so let's begin. We will tap on the karate chop points using our uh, four fingers here. And this is what we call the setup statement, right? And in this statement, we are going to say something like, even though I have this intense pain in my left knee, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And we say this setup statement three times. Even though I have this intense pain in my left knee, I deeply and completely accept and love myself. Even though I have been so bothered and almost traumatized by this left, this pain in my left knee, which is creating difficulties in my movements, in my ability to walk, I deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. This is a setup statement which we have said three times. Now let's go on to tapping. Please open your eyes and look at me. Now we use two fingers. And now we say something which is called the reminder phase. Let's start by tapping at the end points of our eyebrows. This pain in only two, two fingers, two fingers, please look at me, please follow me correctly. Two fingers, yes. Tapping with two fingers, this pain in my left knee. For you all, it could be anything that you're tapping for. This feeling of intense side of the eyes, Keep your eyes open, please, so that you can look at me. Don't close your eyes. Uh, this intense pain in my left knee. We tap for six to eight times on each point. We tap gently. We don't want to hurt ourselves with gentle pressure. By tapping hard, we are not going to create any bigger shifts, right? Um, and with a gentle smile on your face, below the eyes, this intense pain in my left knee. Please look at my hands. Yeah this intense pain in my left knee. This feeling of, now below the nose, this feeling of frustration because of this pain. I want you to really tap into the pain and into the emotions that are creating this pain, right? And what that means we will talk about. This intense pain in my left knee, this intense pain in my left knee, collarbone point. Again, for two hands. This intense pain. And if any part of your body is injured, please don't tap there, right? We should never forget the common sense. Let's not tap there. This intense pain in my left knee. This pain under the arms, four inches below your arms, you can tap with one hand or you can tap with both the hands, whatever feels more comfortable. I feel prefer to do it with one hand. This intense pain in my left knee every time I'm trying to walk or get up. This pain that has been with me for so long. Or you can say this feeling that has been me for, if you're doing fee for feeling. Now top of the head, look at me, please. Top of the head, yeah. Tapping on the top of the head, you can use four fingers. This feeling of frustration because of this pain, this intense pain. And I want you to just stay focused on the sensation of pain, this intense pain, this pain in my left knee. I want you to take your attention down to that part of the body. Feel the pain, this intense pain. All the emotions that are trapped in this pain and this discomfort. All the hidden buried emotions in this discomfort. All this pain all the frustration because of this pain. So keep following me, keep looking at me, keep your eyes open. I'm not gonna say the points again and again, keep changing after six to eight points. And we're going to do one last round. Keep saying your problem. So with EFT, we keep repeating the problem, whether it's pain, whether it's anger, whether it's frustration, whether it's a sense of rejection, whatever is coming up, we keep saying it, right? So that's why we bring it to the surface, this pain this intense pain when I'm walking, all the hidden buried emotions in this pain. It's time to release them today. And I'm happy and ready to release them today. I am ready to release them from all levels, layers and depths of my being.
I know I'm going a little fast because we have lots to cover. Under the arms, this intense pain. Yeah. I want you to bring your arms down now and take three deep breaths and breathing in from the nose and breathing out from the mouth. And make that sound. <sighs> I want you to breathe into the problem area. So almost imagine you're breathing into the knee and breathe out of the knee and take out all the pain out. Second breath is even deeper and louder and bigger. Third time, breathe into that problem area, breathe into the knee and breathe out from there as if you're also releasing the trapped emotions and frustrations from that pain. Having done this, I want you to just be quiet in your energy space, be still, be present and be fully aware. And now I want you to gently and slowly open your eyes. Yeah. And now I want you to share with me, of course, our lovely um, volunteer who is volunteering with us today and anybody else who was following along. Um, Ma'am, would you like to share how did that feel for you? It was a very short session to experience shifts, but tell me how did you feel? Because that's more important. You can unmute yourself, please. I felt something is changing and maybe uh, the pain is also reduced a bit than it so was. Even, would you say from eight, has it gone to 7.5 or seven? Uh, almost six. Almost six. Now that's two points and that's mm. huge, right? Uh, for you and for me, sometimes our mind is wondering, oh, can it be so quick? Can it be so, uh, uh, this thing? Now, how do we know that this is not self-validation or satisfaction as somebody has mentioned is because I've had people whose pain medication has gone down, right? So even though this was a very quick and short round and it, our minds again may feel that it was something uh, that has happened, but it was, we are working on very powerful energy meridian points, right? And when this is done consistently, as a practice, 15 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, as that was shown in that study. And when people are coming off their pain medication or having an in, intense reduction in their pain medication, that's when, we, that's when we know that this is more than a placebo. This is more than a self-satisfactory or a self-validatory tool. I totally understand why some people will think like that because it's too quick to resolve anything, right? So this is something, ma'am, I want you to practice on your own. And I would say that uh, your, listen to your mind, even if it's saying it's a distraction strategy, that's absolutely okay. But let's practice that because you will feel, I, I, I can say that with a lot of ex experience that you will feel a reduction in your uh, pain for sure. Thank you for that. Okay. So I'm actually going to take the other experiences later. And with this, I'm just going to go back to the presentation so that you understand that this was a very, very quick demo. And I'm going to request Ashish to help us with other questions and feedback uh, of, of any other experiences later on. But I just want you to understand that this is something we are going to be going into much, much more detail. It's a three-day workshop that is being planned. Ashish will tell us more about that. Now, the program aims and objectives is for you to understand the modality fully to practice it because there is a lot more to this, but this is obviously the foundation and understand how the emotions and the physical body is related, how the diseases happen and how we work with emotional component in the physical and the physical component in the emotional, right? And we learn and master the technique and release these blocks and the burden that we have. Certain key areas we'll be understanding will be surrogate tapping, borrowing benefits and psychological reversal, right? Uh, the workshop focus will be on pain and physical health challenges. So if you have that, anxiety and stress and PTSD, fear and phobias, craving and addictions and emotional challenges. It could be resentment, it could be anger, it could be anything else. The skills learned will be the entire EFT protocol. It's a self-help tool and you'll understand its applications way beyond your issue. Today, you may be understanding it and doing it just for your pain. But once you understand this, you can do this tomorrow for something else also, like insomnia, huge problems with sleeping. People find 
Im immense benefit. EFT is, a, is, is like layering, unlayering, uh, uncovering and unburdening. It's almost like taking the layers of the onion, peeling the layers of onion. You'll understand how we do that and you'll understand the root cause of your challenge and understand how you do that on your own. And the only requirement from the participants is uh, a desire to change and a commitment to practice and being open to the skill, right? And to be ready to be uh, kind of pushed beyond your comfort zone because that's where we all get stuck in our comfort zone. With that, I'm going to hand it back to Ashish to take us through the rest of the um, uh, workshop. And I will be very, very present to share and answer your questions towards the end. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Napur, for such an awesome workshop. And, you know, the feedback has been uh, so amazing, uh, uh, which is coming in. Anybody would like to share, any one person would like to share how their experience was, tapping along with Dr. Pooja. Ravi Kumar says, excellent. Rupa, Rupali says, I feel like the pain was going with the breath, but still there. Urbashi says, thank you, friends. Uh, we will have more from you. Uh, but now I would like to share with you the details of the workshop that Dr. Nupur has put together. This is an amazing workshop and the best investment uh, Warren Buffet says is investing in ourselves. We often uh, spend money for other things, but we rarely take out time and money to invest in ourselves. And this, is, this quote comes from the self-made billionaire who's amongst the top 10 richest people in the world. Some, at one point of time, somebody asked him, what is the best investment a person can make? Uh, thinking that he will talk about some stock tip or something. But the answer uh, Warren Buffett gave was, it is investment in yourself. And the reason is very simple. Uh, if you invest in a stock, it may give you 10, 20, 100%, 1000% return. But when we invest in ourselves, the returns are infinite. The people who are there in the call need to take uh, uh, you know, two decisions, whether which is regarding investment of time and investment of uh, resources uh, for this program. Having worked in the corporate sector myself, we are very, very conscious about offering high return on your time invested and on the return on investment that you make. So uh, we completely make sure that you get your value, value for your money. There are three sessions as far as time involved. There are three sessions that we have planned for the workshop on 30th, 31st and 1st September, which is in the coming week, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And that time has been kept at 8.30 p.m. when you can comfortably return from your work same time as today and join the workshop. There will also be a bonus uh, hand-holding session uh, in which we will help you apply all the techniques that you have learned on the previous three days and because our objective is not only to teach but help you implement these techniques. And for those who want to take an action, there is a special offer which is valid for next 24 hours where these three sessions and one bonus hand holding session comes to you for 4,999 rupees. And in case you would like to have a one coaching session, one-to-one -one coaching session with Dr. Nupur, in addition to these sessions, it comes for 7,499 rupees. You could Google Pay or Paytm to Ruchi at the number mentioned here. You can take the screenshot and remit the payment. Once you remit the fees, uh, please uh, let us know so that we can welcome you to the group. Uh, these are some testimonials that we've received from the earlier participants of our session. I'll hold here for you to go through this. Deep gratitude to Nopur, doctor. Very happy to attend your, your awesome. Uh, so amazing outcomes we have got. Uh, we conducted this session last year in August and we are doing this again this year. So if you miss the bus now, the next bus will come only in August next year. So please uh, hurry up and decide. Uh, some of the questions that we get from pop, uh, routinely from people is what if, you know, what if I am not able to 
join the session you know i sign up for the program but i miss a session because of any uh, commitment at work or personal commitment in that case friends we share the recording of the session with you and you will not miss anything and anyway that is also the idea why we have the bonus hand holding session in case you miss any session any uh, you can always cover up by asking questions directly to dr nakul in the bonus hand holding session we are 100% convinced about the quality of work and content that we bring and hence we are very comfortable offering a money back guarantee to you in case you sign up and at any point of time feel that this is not something that is working for you we'll be happy to return 100% of your fees with no questions asked uh, so please feel free to take that leap of faith and join us and all of our sessions are guaranteed to improve your uh, quality of life that's our mission that's our endeavor at mindful living we very carefully choose our speakers dr nupur is one of the most popular speakers on the mindful living platform many a times you know when i speak with our community members they only ask me this when is the next session when is the next program from dr nupur so that is something which speaks a lot about the quality of work that she does uh, she is very popular within the community in case you are a part of the community you would always all, already know that in case you are not a part of the community uh, 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 our, uh, uh, community then please join us uh, sharing the link that i have shared in the chat earlier uh, once again in case you can take the screenshot of this number and remit the fees let us know once you have done that we'll now open up the session for q and a uh, if you have any questions we'll be happy to take them and please stay till the end of the session there are some free resources that we'll be sharing with you uh, so that you can benefit from it even if you decide not to come for the course thank you ashish um i hope you have understood and had a taste of all of us you know for the of this technique uh, it's a technique that we have uh, a lot of literature on uh, and those are the free resources that we will be sharing with you please understand that you are not a victim of your health challenges or your life situation uh, the whole intention of these tools is for us to be able to rise from that victim consciousness into a victor consciousness right so that's our intention to help ourselves and not be dependent on medication only though medication is very important but we don't have to be overly dependent on drugs or medication we don't have to feel uh, helpless with our health challenges and that's why these modalities help us to improve the quality of your life so if you have any question and if you want to share how that experience was if you have any doubts about the technique also what we demonstrated please feel free to ask me we are around for another 10 minutes thank you dr nappar thank you divya for signing up for the workshop uh, the enrollments as i mentioned are open for next 24 hours uh, and after that the rates will go up at this the fees will go up uh, there is another question uh, whether this is a certification program i'll let dr nappar respond to that uh, well you will not gain anything from the certification because uh, it's a technique that you are learning for self help it's a self help tool but if you need a certificate uh, mindful living can give you a certificate of participation for sure i'm sure ashish that should not be a problem right if somebody oh, wants so, to uh, so. yeah that's not a problem why i asked this question is that uh, certification program that can i become a certified practitioner uh, after attending this workshop no this is for you to learn it as a participant this is not a teacher training program again why this question is that i have been using this technique uh, since couple of years now so i know oh, this technique but uh, the only thing is uh, i want to become a practitioner yeah yeah so this is actually a program for participants to help themselves and to become empowered uh, using a technique uh, for their own life and health challenges um, not really for somebody who wants to become expert Uh, i have trained in many many um, many over many years and uh, over many training programs and i've had many teachers in this modality so um, not yet but maybe someday we'll do it for teachers as well okay thank you dr nabar we have a question from devlina how will i do it on my child who is a small kid to calm his anxiety and anger um uh, thank you for the question devdina uh, when you learn the technique you will learn something which we call the surrogate tapping 
Now in surrogate tapping, you learn how to do it for other, other people. So this is a technique that you will understand when we will be, I'll be teaching you surrogate tapping. So then you can do it for the other people. Also, once you understand, you can involve your child to tap alongside, even if it's a little ch child, you can just tell them, okay, say, you know, you can just say that, okay, let's play a game. Let's play a game with mommy. And you can ask him that let's do this while I'm doing, you know, we'll just say a few things and we'll tap together. So you can include the child because it's so much fun that the child gets uh, included. But even if you don't want to include the child, you can tap on the child while the child is sleeping by saying the thing that you need to. Or you can just do surrogate tapping where you say to yourself that I ta I'm tapping for this person and you tap on your body or you can tap on their body. So surrogate tapping gives you many options and it's very powerful, right? So surrogate tapping can be done in multiple ways and you will learn this technique in the workshop. So you can do it for uh, children. You can do it for your elderly parents who are going through something difficult or anybody actually. Uh, thank you for asking that question, Deblina, because Dr. Shilpa also had the same question. I trust Dr. Shilpa, this has been addressed now. Thank you. And there was a comment earlier uh, in the chat which says from Urvashi, uh, wherein she is, mentions that her pain was earlier rated at six. And after doing this tapping for, uh, you know, three rounds, her pain has gone down to two. So that's an amazing uh, feedback. Thank you for sharing that, Urvashi. Yeah. yeah. And um, sometimes what happens is um, it was a very, very short, it was more like a demo thing, but you have to also understand that a lot of times we have something which is called, um, uh, you know, a, a resistance, a resistant mindset. Sometimes we become so comfortable in being a certain way that a part of us, which is what we call, do, we also do something called the path therapy. A part of us doesn't want to let go of that challenge. And it wants to hold on to that challenge. It's, it's resistant. It doesn't want to let go. So with, with tapping, we also deal with that part. We also deal with that part of our mind, which is very critical. So we, as I said, it's an uncovering, unlayering, and an unburdening process. Like layers of onion, we keep taking out the issue. And you'll understand how we do that through tapping. So even if somebody feels resistant that, oh, this is not going, then we tap on the resistance. And as we keep feeling differently, we kept, keep tapping differently. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Any any uh, any experiences? Any people? Anybody who thinks it doesn't work? I'm very happy to ask and answer any questions. We have a hand up Hello. again. Yeah. Hello, Pilani again. Yes. Uh, I'm having a little more serious problem. Otherwise, okay. I'm generally okay. Like you know, um, most of the time I'm okay in the mornings afternoons but suddenly some pain attack suddenly something actually uh, yes i am a cured cancer patient really and all other medications are there a lot of weight obesity all these problems are existing okay so i was wondering whether this technique alone or hypnotherapy should be helping um in this uh, workshop i will be not teaching hypnosis or i'll not be conducting hypnosis uh, so I would say uh, focus on when you're learning this technique, uh, this can, it's one technique which you can use in many uh, ways. But if, of course, you have something which is more deep seated, because in my coaching sessions, I combine all modalities. So if you feel that something needs to be deeper dug out and you need assistance, you can obviously anytime contact me. Uh, you can contact Ashish and, you know, we can help you through this. But uh, I would say that... Um, this tool, like self-hypnosis, is a self-help tool. So this tool will give you the charge. For certain things, you go to a, 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 a specialist, but certain things you can do on your own. So, you know, it's like when you go for even for your medical consultations, there are certain things which the doctor helps you with and certain things they ask you to do on your own. EFT is a technique that you can do on your own, right? So uh, for anything more, be very happy to consult and, and give you some guidance. Yeah, that is um, what I may need to talk to you. One yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, I see a question on asthma. Now, asthma is definitely something um, that can be helped, right? Uh, because the, the, the person who's, who's saying this is saying they know it's because of a childhood trauma. So it is a manifestation oh. of a trauma. So we do something which is called, as you have just seen in PTSD, post-traumatic stress, we release this. 
I would say, um, Rupali, um, you have asked this question. If you have been living with asthma, I would say, you know, if you have tried anything and it hasn't helped you, I, I feel very confident that this should be able to help you. So, you know, I obviously, um, it, it, there are so many aspects to a trauma, but to some extent, it will definitely help you. So I'm, I'm quite hopeful and confident. Thank you, Rupali, for asking that question. Uh, Sridhar, please go on. Yeah, good evening, ma'am. Uh, I have been suffering from uh, arthritis pain for almost three months now. And uh, I was diagnosed earlier of uh, a psoriatic problem also. And I have taken some allopathy medicine with the rheumatologist in Chennai, but uh, yeah, it's not working. I have some side effects on the stomach problem and ulcer issues were right there. So now I am going with the naturopath who is giving me this acupuncture treatment. And uh, but they say it's very uh, slow healing process and then a uh, uh, lot of food habits has to be changed and everything. So which I am doing it. And this EFT is uh, uh, a new thing for me. I'm just uh, first time I'm hearing of this, and uh, how, I I don't understand how does this work. Actually. Yeah. So uh, were you there from the beginning of the presentation? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So I explained a lot of science behind it. It actually helps us to calm down the uh, the fight, flight, or fright response, and it is actually working on the energy i would just request everybody to mute themselves please yeah, thank you can you please mute yourselves if you're not um talking thank you so this is a this is a has this, uh, like you are as you are saying you are doing acupuncture acupressure so this is based on the energy meridians as per the traditional chinese medicine this is based on our um, amygdala hijack uh, that happens in our nervous systems in terms of chronic uh, health challenges, chronic stress, right? So it helps to calm down and impacts our nervous system. I would request you to go over the recording again and have a listen because there are key areas of the brain where the changes are happening. Like we saw in the study of the patients who are obese and their food cravings and their food triggers, certain areas of the brain got activated. So this is actually creating shifts at the level of our uh, uh, of our uh, brain and it is creating our shifts in towards a parasympathetic nervous system response, which is the rest and relaxation response. It is telling the body that you are safe now, you can feel fully and you can release because the energy that's trapped in the energy channels, which you're already working with because you're going for acupressure, that's the space where we are releasing, but we are not using needles, we are using activation of the trigger points. Now, these are the activation of the endpoints of those energy meridians, which we activate through tapping, right? So this is the way this works. And uh, please listen to the entire presentation again, because you'll understand and you'll catch more research and do your own research. You still have time. We are starting the workshop on Tuesday. So you still have time. So if you, if you can go and look it up, a lot of literature is there. The free resources we will be sharing with you in five minutes time, go over them. And then if you have any questions, you can call up Ashish and I'll be very happy to help you. But it's, it's, it's a very scientific and it's a very, very profound science-based tool that um, EFT is. Okay. Uh, thank you for answering, ma'am, actually. And uh, if I simultaneously uh, take that uh, treatment also, will there be any uh, effect towards this? It will only uh, help to compound it. It only helps to better your well-being because it's a it's kind of complementary we don't stop anything we don't stop our medications we don't stop our existing treatments this is something this is a tool that will empower you to use it on your own right so you are only going to accelerate your healing so that's what will happen that will what will happen along with your existing therapy okay and I'm also doing this yoga practice. I'm also practicing yoga and uh, this meditation and all. Okay. So, uh, will this uh, EFT have any connection with that uh, yoga and meditation also? 
Absolutely. You know, yoga is yog, is the connection <clears throat> and coming together of the energy body with our physical body. So when we are working, we are working on our energy system. With EFT, we are working actually on our energetic system. So it definitely will make you feel more calmer, more relaxed, and that will help you to even get more deeper in your meditative and yogic states, right? So it will definitely have an impact on that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for time. asking your questions. I'm sure it helped everybody. Thank you, Sridhar. I appreciate your asking the question. Uh, Kalyani, I see your hand is up. Uh, you already have uh, Dr. Nupur's number. I'll request you to connect with her directly uh, as this is time okay. for us to close the session now. Uh, if anybody else has any question, yes, Manoji, uh, last question from Manoji, and then we'll bring the session to a close. Well, I don't have any questions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just to say happy morning to Nupurji. And emotionally, I want to express my gratitude to make everybody uh, learn the wonderful things. And I hope she will go on continuing and make the other people who, who free of what you were emotionally, free of free emotional techniques today. Thank you. Thank and, you so much, Mr. Manoj. And, really uh, yeah, appreciate yeah. your um, participation. And, then, you. and all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Thank you, Manojit. On that very positive note, we bring the session to a close. Uh, over the next one or two days, we'll share the recording with you and also the free resources that you can uh, reach, uh, look up and continue to practice on your own. As I mentioned earlier, you have 24 hours to take a decision on joining the workshop at the fees that we mentioned. So we look forward to taking you're taking the right decision, taking the right decision for you, which works for you. But I would like to close mentioning that this is a very, very powerful technique, very well researched, which will which you will benefit from practicing either on your own, learn on your own or with us. Either way, all the very best to you. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you for joining us once again. Thank you, Dr. Nupur, for conducting this awesome session for us. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, the LG.